Daniel Jones, he's getting I, he's getting the one more year at least for now. We've heard the front office said they're still not sure with the with the new sh- the staff they brought in with Joe Shane now. So, would you give Daniel Jones this this one more chance? And if if so, and if not, is there a quarterback you would want in this draft? I think the quarterbacks in this draft, there's a question mark next to all of them whether they're going to be a franchise quarterback. Listen, listen by the way. All the great quarterbacks coming out of college have question marks because there's been an awful lot of Ryan leaks over the years, right? They came out, everybody said they were going to be great, and they weren't. Mm-hmm. You know, um, maybe 50% of the first round, fran- early first round quarterback picks really become franchise quarterbacks, maybe only half. So uh, I don't, none of these guys jump out at me as a sure thing, but maybe some of them will be. Look at Lamar Jackson that year, right? He was mm-hmm. like, what, the fourth quarterback picked, and he turned out to be. One of the better ones. So, Everyone wanted him to play wide receiver. <laughs> yeah, they want to play wide receiver. So uh, I think they're I, – I, I bet you that the Giants go offensive line ta- t- tackle. I bet you they take the Alabama guy. Well, and Neil, then, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Neil's going to be there at five. I, I really no, don't. No, you don't? Really no. interesting. All right, no. So uh, I haven't looked at that as closely as you. I know that's who they want. Then they got the guy from North Carolina State and the guy from Mississippi. I, I, I think that if Neil falls to the Jets, the Jets will trade out of that fourth pick because a lot of teams will be sitting there wanting that pick. And I okay. think the Jets will, be, Jets will be willing to let a team at seven or eight jump the spot and get a, 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 an extra second-round pick uh, in the second round to give them an additional third second-round pick. I could see the Jets doing that, uh, especially Neil. Neil is the best offensive lineman in this year's draft as – uh, you know, as what people are saying that he is, there's still a question on on how he's going to fall. There is rumors that Houston is absolutely targeting uh, Sauce Gardner. Mm-hmm. That's what I am reading, which means if Sauce falls to three, and 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 that could that could really ruin this whole draft board that everybody is looking at right now because it's right now uh, it's Neil or Hutchinson at one. And then Neil or Hutchinson at number two. And then everybody was talking about Thibodeau. If Thibodeau is not number three, I mean, if you're the Jets or the Giants at three, uh, I mean, four and five, you have to draft Thibodeau. I mean, because even though a lot of people are saying that he doesn't want to play football, they said that about Miles Garrett, uh, Garrett too. And look at what Miles Garrett is. He's a, he's a reckoning machine. So if you have a guy like Thibodeau sitting there at four or five, if the Jets pass up on him, the Giants have to – they have to draft him. Well, they certainly since they've been trying to get an edge rusher since like uh, uh, Omanora and Strahan. I mean, it's been like that long. Mm. Um, but, I mean, I don't know. When you look at the tape and you look at the history of Thibodeau, I don't know if he's going to be a 10-15 sack NFL oh, player. I do. First of all, you do? You know, his his first step is as good as anybody right now in the NFL. Everybody well, was talking. Everybody was if talking. You're correct. They should take him. <laughs> there. Here's the thing. Why did Why did Micah Parsons have so many sacks this year? Because of his first step, he's very fast off the edge. It's not. He's not big. He's not any of that. He's actually a small linebacker. He really is. He's stocky. He's like six foot one, and he's he's not heavy. He's like two hundred and thirty pounds. What made him so good is his speed, his first step. So, what do you need to be a great edge rusher? You need to have a good first step. Thibodeau, I think, is I think he is like. One faster step than Micah Parsons does at the edge. So he's bigger. He's stronger. I, I think Micah Parsons is going to be a beast. I mean, not Micah Parsons. I think T- uh, Kayvon Thibodeau is going to be a beast in this league. The question is, is he going to go to the right team where they're going to put him in the right position to succeed? I don't know if the Giants are that team. They have an offensive-minded coach. Yes, they have Wink, John, uh, Wink um, Martindale. Martindale, who's a very good defensive you know, mind. I think he would fit better with the Jets because, obviously, Robert Sala loves those edge rushers, and he's, he's really developed good edge rushers over the years. I, so, I still think the Jets, the Giants' number one priority in the first round is not edge rusher. I think it's offensive tackle. So I do, they too. Don't get, if they don't take, if they can't get Neil, 
uh, they take the guy from North Carolina State. I apologize. I can't say his name. I absolutely Aquano. believe. But if, Kiv- if if Thibodeau is there at five, you draft him. I- I'm telling you. It, it, I'm going to you- throw something out at you about yeah, the Giants. Go ahead. If I was trying to help Daniel Jones, mm-hmm. and I think as what, – what did uh, Mara say? Mm-hmm. We've done everything we could to screw the kid up. Yes. So that quote he said. <laughs> yes. Um, the one thing I would get him through the draft, maybe in the first round – I mean, it may happen in the second round, but um, I'd love to see them get a big time receiver. Mm. Well, they drafted. Not, they draft- I don't feel great about the giant receiving core. You know, Shepard uh, coming off injury. Tony, who's still kind I of like a question Tony. mark to me, yeah. and Galladay, who's always injured and didn't have a great first year. I really think if you want to help Daniel Jones, you get a lineman, but you better get him a good young receiver too. I think Tony is still a very good wide receiver. And if he could stay healthy, he could stay on the field. I think Tony could be in a 1,000, 1,200-yard type of wide receiver that's going to give you seven, eight touchdowns. He's got the speed. He's very hard to tackle. The problem with Tony is it's the same problem as Odell Beckham had. He says things and does things on the field that pisses people off. And I haven't seen him do anything off the field, but on the field, the guy talks, he yaps, he gets his teammates pissed off, and he gets the other team pissed off. And what did Odell Beckham do? What was he the king of doing that? He was he was the king of pissing other people off, including his teammates. So Tony's that type of player. He's a he's a flary personality. And I, I think that he you need to be that way in New York, but not too much. Because it, it ran Odell Beckham out, and Odell's still a good player. He really is, and he's still available. The current team's lining, still lining up for him. I, I think he's going to go back. I think he's going to go to the AFC. That's where I think he's going. But that's so, my opinion. I'll tell you what I think of Tony. I saw him play in college at Florida. My son goes to the University of South Carolina, mm-hmm. so I saw him play in my son's school. Uh, I'm an SEC fan because my son's down there. Tony is a great um, – he's very fast. He's got great moves. He breaks tackles. He's an incredibly exciting receiver. I also think he could be a really good uh, punt returner as well. Um, I think he's a perfect punt returner. You know what he's not great at? Mm-hmm. Route running. He's never been a great route runner his whole life. He's never really done that. He was more of a gadget guy. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. playing flanker, sometimes coming out of backfield and catching passes. So I still think of him. I don't disagree that he's an incredibly exciting guy with lots of talent. But he's got a long way to go develop to be a top wide receiver at NFL. I, I don't see that happening this year. Hmm. So, so you mentioned you mentioned the offense that Tony is that type of player. They bring in a new offensive coach in Brian Dable, hmm. who has done much more creative things than we've seen past Giants offensive coordinators do, sure. where they're not going to use gadget players creatively as it is. So, what do you think about Dable's offensive scheme coming to the Giants with these skilled players and? Uh, what he could bring as a head coach in terms of the Bills culture, bringing that over to the Giants. Well, he's certainly going to allow Daniel Jones to run more because I can't believe how much they let Allen run. The last couple of years you watch Buffalo, I'm like, an, I'm not even a Buffalo fan. I'm a poor nervous wreck every time I see Allen run with the ball because mm. you say to see a, a superstar quarterback like that get hurt on a run. Right. And sometimes he doesn't always slide, Allen. Um, so I think Daniel Jones is going to run a lot more especially since they don't even have him signed after, after this year. He might be running a lot this year. Mm. Um, no, no, I think, he, I think he's a great offensive mind. Uh, and um, I think it's certainly going to improve. I mean, last year was a disaster. And uh, the giant offense last year was an absolute disaster. Mm. Now, I don't know how else you could look at it, right? They fired the offensive coordinator uh, at about 10 games. Then they brought that former Cleveland Brown coach in, Kitchens, the whole thing was a disaster right. for the entire – all 17 games was a disaster. Right. So if they could only get better, and they're going to. It's very interesting, especially – by the way, we are talking to WVOX College Hoops Chat radio show host Jim Maciano. Uh, I, I will say this, and, and we'll get off the Giants, but I, the thing that I'm very interested to see this year – is what they're going to do with Daniel Jones because they they finally they finally have a viable uh, uh, second string quarterback in Tyrod Taylor. I think that was a good move by the New York Giants, especially with Daniel Jones. And if they don't really find the protection that he needs this off season, they're going to have a long. He's going to have a long season this year, running for a dear life. And the Giants, their schedule 
is is a, is a very good schedule. I mean, the Giants could win 10 games this year. They really could. The schedule absolutely falls in their favor and that division's favor. They have some of the easiest games this year. So I think the Giants are positioned very, very well. To, if, if Dabo can get them somewhat healthy this year and they don't get so many injuries and they, they get a viable offensive line, I think uh, the Giants are going to be positioned very, very well.